Hi, this is Pastor Kevin. I want to talk today about how the Bible is reliable. The world is full of different religions and each one has their own holy book and many skeptics and doubters and atheists have tried to make the claim that the Bible is full of fairy tales and has no basis in reality or history. And it is true that the Bible is full of stories and many of them are meant to be uh, allegories and parables. Uh, not everything is meant to be taken literally in the Bible. It's full of metaphors. But there are many historical accounts of the Bible that actually happened. The, the biggest proof of the, re of the reliability of the Bible is what is called fulfilled prophecy. Many holy books say a lot of good things. Uh, say a lot of good philosophy about life and God and the universe and life and so forth. But uh, the proof of the Bible's uh, reliability is in fulfilled prophecy. That is to say that men or women of old uh, said something would happen and then it happened. For example, we have in the Bible the prophecy from Old Testament prophets about the fall of Israel to the nation of Assyria. Many of Israel's prophets warned Israel that this would have happened, and in fact it happened. In about 722 BC, Israel fell to the nation of Assyria. Likewise, we have Old Testament prophets that predicted the fall of Jer Jerusalem. And then in 587 BC, it actually happened. Babylon overtook uh, Judah, laid siege to, to Judah and the temple, destroyed the temple, and took many of the Judeans into Babylonian exile. It's all history, and it was all predicted by the prophets in what we call the Old Testament. So, again, any religion or, or person or group could create and write their own holy book and say, this came from God. But again, the proof is when somebody said something specific would happen, and then, years later, it happened exactly the way it was predicted, prophesied, in a sense. Even Jesus, Jesus predicted the destruction of the second temple in Jerusalem. In Luke 21 and Matthew 24, he predicted the fall of Jerusalem. Now at that time, many of his contemporaries said, that's not going to happen, you're crazy. You're full of it, because Jerusalem is God's house, the temple. God's not going to allow that to happen. Well, that's exactly what they said before the first fall of, of Jerusalem and, uh, and the temple in the 6th century, and it fell to Babylon. So Jesus accurately predicted the fall of the second temple of Jerusalem. At a time when the first century Jews believed that God would send the Messiah to the earth and then that the Messiah would lead an army to overcome the Roman Empire and that the Messiah would rule the world in a messianic kingdom age from the capital city of Jerusalem. That was the mentality of the Jewish people in the first century. Here comes Jesus he predicts the destruction, not of the, the Roman Empire, but of Jerusalem and the Temple. And well, no wonder his contemporaries called him crazy and full of Beelzebub, you know, the devil and all that. He said in Matthew's Gospel, Truly I tell you, not one stone here at the Temple will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. And he said the same thing in Luke's Gospel. And guess what? He said that around 30 AD, and it, it actually happened 
in 69 and 70 AD. The Roman Empire destroyed Jerusalem and the temple. In fact, the words of Jesus came to pass when he said, not one stone will be left upon another. The Romans destroyed Jerusalem and the temple. This is all recorded by the first century Jewish historian Josephus. They set fire to the temple. Subsequently, the fire caused the gold leaf ornamentation in the temple ceiling to melt. That created what you might call melting gold. And the melting gold flowed down the walls and settled into the crevices within the stones. Now after the fire was out and the, the destruction was over, the Romans, in an effort to recover the gold, they pried apart the stones and removed the melted gold that had melted into the crevices of the stones. Much of these treasures sacked from Jerusalem would go to fund constructions like the Flavian Amphitheater. So there is Jesus. The words he said in Luke 21, verses 23 and 24, and Matthew 24, verses 1 and 2, when he not only accurately predicted the fall of Jerusalem and the temple, but he accurately predicted that not one stone would be left upon another. So the Bible is reliable. And yes, there is poetic language when King David said in the Psalms that uh, the mountains danced for joy. It, he, didn't, he did not mean that in the literal sense. And people can debate whether uh, Jonah was literally in the belly of the fish or not. There is now biblical archaeology that proves the historical evidence for the Bible. Speaking of Jesus, who I mentioned before, Jesus was an actual historical person. You know, the world believes that Julius Caesar was the first Roman emperor, yet no one alive today witnessed the historical event. It is accepted by faith. The world believed that Abraham the world believes that Abraham Lincoln was president in, during the Civil War. The only proof that Abraham Lincoln lived was that there was a war. It is recorded in history books written by people, men, really. Abraham Lincoln's uh, presidency and life and times are accepted by faith. His historical records are accepted by faith. The world believes that Socrates, the great philosopher, lived and died. It is accepted by faith. Nobody doubts that George Washington was the first president of the United States. They believe the historical records about him by faith. The existence of the great military leader uh, Alexander the Great is questioned by no one. Men believe that he existed based upon the historical records. Same is true with Napoleon, Napoleon Bonaparte and many others. Many others who were never photographed or audio recorded or video recorded. And some of them, in some cases, didn't even write about themselves. A lot was writ written about them. And yet, their existence, their lives, are accepted by faith, really. And so, the thing is, there are no living witnesses to confirm that these historical figures lived, nor that the historical facts about them are true. There are no photographs of any kind. The fact that Jesus lived and died and performed miracles and was resurrected from the dead was not only recorded by the apostles, John, Peter, but it was also recorded by what are called extra-biblical accounts. Josephus, the 
first century Jewish historian refers to Jesus and many others who were, who were not Christians, who were not Jewish, mentioned the life of Jesus in first century historical records. So, today you and I have reasons to believe that the Bible is reliable. God is expressing himself and God wants to talk to you today. So I encourage you, open the Bible, read the Bible, begin in the New Testament with the Gospel of Luke. There you have so many awesome stories recorded about Jesus. The, the prodigal son who comes home and is accepted by his father. The good shepherd who goes after the lost sheep until he finds it. The many healings of Jesus. His prayer life is all there. So the Bible is reliable. God speaks to us and he spoke to us many hundreds of years ago thousands of years ago through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit through the men and women who wrote the books of the Bible. God bless.